All right, here we go with round two, my friends. Okay, now this actually, this question, it could have been written as cotangent, right? Because cotangent is cosine over sine. So if it were written as cotangent, okay, then you would change it to cosine over sine. This is already as cosine over sine, so we're chilling. All right, let's let u equal sine x. Let's let du equal cosine x dx, which will basically just turn this whole thing into 1 over u du, okay? Which the integral of that is ln of u. And again, I'm going to, right here, change my endpoints. Because I want to use u numbers instead of x numbers. So, okay, this says pi over 2. If I plug that in here, what's the sine of pi over 2? Do we remember our best friend chart? Okay, pi over 2 is up here. That's a point zero one. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then if we're going to plug in pi over 4. Now sine of pi over 4 comes off of the other chart. You guys want to look at the chart where it goes like... Again, this is your best friend chart, but it's like the sine cosine tangent. And it goes pi 6, pi 4, pi 3. And if you remember, the sine of pi over 4 right there was root 2 over 2. Okay, so that's going to change to root 2 over 2. Okay, now, when I actually like do top minus bottom, I get the ln of 1 minus the ln of square root 2 over 2. Okay, now the ln of 1 is 0. So my answer should be negative ln root 2 over 2. Uh, do you guys see that in here somewhere? No. Okay, so does that mean we did it wrong? No, it means that the AP question writers are messing with us. We hate this, right? But now we're like, I know your tricks. I know your tricks. And I'm going to bring this up like this. So it's the ln of, I don't need the absolute values anymore because it's positive, 2 over root 2. And then I'm like, hmm, I still don't see that. Okay, but check it out. If I take 2 over root 2 and I rationalize it, I get 2 root 2 over 2, because square root 2 times square root 2 is 2, which cancels out. And I get the ln of root 2. What the heck? So mean. But hopefully you guys see where like all that stuff came from. So you know, like this initial part right here, is that correct? Absolutely. They just wanted to put the negative up and flip it and be pains about it. Okay. Okay. Here's another perfect question. Definitely got a couple of these on our test. Remember they're all U sub. We're just switching things around. U is 2X. DU is 2DX. 2 1 half. Okay. This turns into 1 half f of u du and I got to change these points right here okay 6 will convert to 12 12 will convert to 24 all right and then it's like kind of this is what I got to do okay let's see here Okay, this was 10, and then I converted it to here, so that's also 10. So if I want to solve for just that part, okay, how do I solve for that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this 2 on both sides. So it says the integral from 12 to 24 of f of u du equals 20. So, and remember, like, okay, like on here, I have f of u du, and on all of these, they have f of t dt. Remember that the variable is arbitrary. You can use whatever you want, right? So, it's going to go 12 to tw 24, and it's going to equal 20. So, it's this one. Okay. 
10. Um, that equals 20, but they didn't change the endpoints right here, so it's not that one. Okay, cool. Absolute value. What are we going to do? We're going to draw it. That was terrible. Okay. All right. This is going to move right one. Right one. Oh, this is dumb. <laughs> well, the a, a integral from zero to one is just this little teeny tiny triangle right here. It's not even two separate triangles. It's just that one, which is literally one half base times height. So that just equals 0.5. All right. Cool, cool. Ooh, you guys, this is a little review one. This is a little review one. If I see f of x and it wants me to find f prime of x, that means I'm taking a derivative, right? See if you remember this. Take a derivative of that. That means I take a derivative of that. And what's a derivative of an integral? Boom, boom, put that in. So it's e to the negative x squared. Like that's it. Don't go crazy, you know? This is getting all these big, huge, crazy answers. Nope, it's literally just that. And remember, we don't do anything with the constant. The constant goes away. Okay, so that's kind of like old school. This is just like not even a big deal. It's actually just asking you. This is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. This is it. Okay, uh, check it out. It says f and f are continuous functions. It says the derivative of big F is little f. So in that case, what's the integral of little f? Big F evaluated from B to A. And then it's just top minus bottom. Like that's literally it. This is just the definition of the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is the definition of integrals. All right. Easy, easy. Oh my gosh. Calm the heck down. Okay. This is fun. All right. You guys, four sub intervals. Four to six. Half that is five. So that's 4.5. And that's 5.5. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? Midpoint sum. Okay. Midpoint, it still takes the base. So it takes the base of each of those. Now the base is 0.5 or one half. Okay. And then the midpoint is going to take the heights of all the midpoints. Well, the midpoints are 4.25, 4.75, 5.25, and 5.75. Okay. And so that one looks kind of weird. There we go. All right. And then how do I actually find the heights? So I have to find the heights at those points. Remember, if you have a table, it just tells you if you have a graph, you can look at it. But if you have equation, I take all these and I just plug them in there. So I'm looking for like, so the first one would be 4.25 to the third plus one and the square root of that. Three plus one, do, do, do. that's good. Oh, except for that says one fourth. So that's no good. That's no good. What's the difference between these two? One half. And then did one half again. That's no good. It's definitely this one. Because it's one half. And then it's not like I'm averaging the two. No, I'm taking the number in the middle. So I'm just plugging in 4.25, 4 4.75, 5.25, 5.75. Okay. All right. Nice. Um, U sub. Okay, U is 1 minus X squared. DU is negative 2X DX. That's already got a 2X DX, so that's cool. I just have to put a negative. So this is going to give me 1 over square root U DU. Okay, now, 1 over square root U, I bring that up as U to the negative 1 half. So when I integrate it, Okay, this negative is still there, negative, and then it's u to the one half over one half. But I don't do over one half, I do times two. Okay? Uh, because it's in terms of u, I'm going to change my endpoints. 
Ooh, this is ugly. Okay. Ah, that's fine. All right, one half squared is a fourth. One minus a fourth is three fourths. Yeah. Okay. And then this is zero. One minus zero is one. Goodness, I'm going to have to simplify this a lot. Although, if I'm, like, being smart about it, I know these aren't going to be, like, pi over sixes, because that's weird. And I know it's not going to be an ln, so I kind of just have to go between those two, so, you know? Okay. I'll put the negative 2 on the outside. Now, this is 3 fourths to the 1 half and 1 to the 1 half. Okay, so let's think about that. 3 fourths to the 1 half is the square root of 3 fourths, which is, okay, the square root of 3 and the square root of 4 is 2 minus 1. Let's go ahead and distribute that now. He, right here, those twos will cancel out. So it's negative square root of 3. And then right here, negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. So there we go. That's not too bad. So it's 2 minus root 3. Okay. Uh, okay, 28 u substitution. u is x plus 1 du is dx, so nothing I have to change in there really. Um, so this is going to go to u to the 1 half du, which goes u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. Changing my endpoints, if I put in a 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. If I put in a 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So I have 2 thirds. Okay, 4 to the 3 halves minus 4 to the 1 half. Now you definitely want to be able to do those, okay? Let's do a little reminder off on this side here. 4 to the 3 halves is the square root of 4 to the third. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the third is 8. Okay. That's really weird, you guys. Why did I write 4 to the 1 half? Why because it's so late? Okay, so 4 to the 3 halves, 1 to the 3 halves. I don't know why I wrote that, but I'm going to caught it a little sooner this time. And you can really hear my kids snoring now. I'm so sorry. Hey, buddy, roll over. Anyway. <laughs> the uh, square root of 1 is 1, 1 to the third is 1. Okay? So this is going to give me 2 thirds, 8 minus 1. So 2 thirds of 7 is 14 thirds. Let's go. Perfect. Okay. All right, nice. Here is my next one. If the substitution u equals x over 2 is made, that integral turns into what? Okay, cool. We got this. Okay. u is x over 2. du is 1 half dx. So I got to do... Oh, I love more. 1 half 2. Okay. Now. Jeez. Okay, this turns into 2. I'm going to change my endpoints in a minute. That's u right there. So the top turns into 1 minus u squared. The problem is I still have an x on the bottom. So do you guys remember how we deal with that? Like how do we deal with the fact when we have like an x left over? when we're supposed to all be in terms of u, well, we come over to here and we say, okay, if u is x divided by 2 and I solve for x, x is 2u. So I can come in here now and I can solve for that. There we go. And then it's not actually like having me solve it. It just wanted me to set it up. Oh, snap. Uh, I need to put my endpoints. Okay, my endpoints, that 4, if I plug that in, turns into a 2, and that 2 turns into a 1. So it's definitely 1 to 2, so it's neither of those. Now, this is weird, guys, because I have a 2 out here, but I definitely don't have anything on any of these. So, like, where did that 2 go? Well, check this out, okay? That 
is a constant, which I don't really need, right? So I can bring it outside. And since it was on the bottom, 2 over 2 is 1. So then my answer is just going to be from 1 to 2, 1 minus u squared over u. So that's going to be this one. Okay. That would be if you forgot to, um, you know, take that two one half, that one half, and then the two right there, and then that would be if you tried to move that two inside. That one really makes sense. All right, great. Let's look at thirty. Now, you guys, we've talked about this before. When you're adding a number, k is just like a constant, but when you're adding a number, you need to um, integrate that number as well, right? So it's like I'm going to integrate negative 2 to 2 of x to the 7th, and then I'm going to integrate negative 2 to 2 of k. Okay, now x to the 7th is x to the 8 over 8. Why would they make me do like such a monstrous problem with no calculator? Well, look, 2 to the 8th over 8 minus negative 2 to the 8th over 8. Well, this is to an even exponent, and so, like, whatever the correct 2 to the 8th is, I have no idea, okay? That is also going to turn into 2 to the 8th over 8, and so this first integral is just 0. So now I just have to do this one. The integral of k is kx. So if I do top minus bottom, that first one is k times 2. That one is negative k times 2. So I end up getting 2k plus 2k, which is 4k. All right, so this gives me 0 plus 4k. That's what that integral is. And then it tells me up here that this integral is 16. So if 4k is 16, what does k equal? k equals 4. Okay? Love it. Not too bad. Another absolute value. Jeez, this is repetitive. But repetitive is a good thing. Especially if you guys are like, oh my gosh, it's so repetitive. It's so easy. That's fabulous because then you're going to freaking kick butt on this test. All right, boom. Boom. Okay, I am going from 0 to 3. All right, this little baby triangle is one half base times height, so that's one half. This triangle is one half base times height, so that's that. So then it's uh, two and one half. Two and a half is five halves. Okay. All right, 32, this is u sub for sure. I'm gonna let that be three x. So then du is 3 dx, okay? So I've got 3 one third. This turns into sine u du. Okay, integral of sine is negative cosine, and I am going to change my endpoints. Now, when I put pi over 3 in here, 3 times pi over 3 is just pi. And when I put 0 in here, 3 times 0 is 0. Okay, so let me leave the negative one third on the outside, and basically I need to know what cosine of pi is, and I need to know what cosine of zero is. So I get out my handy dandy best friend chart. That's the point one zero, that's point negative one zero, and cosine is the x coordinate. All right. So, okay, so, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so, cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So it's negative 1 third times negative 2. So that's just 2 thirds. Okay.
This is a weird question. This is a thinker. Let's think about this. F is continuous and it's on the closed interval 0 to 2. I'm just going to draw like this part of the graph. So this is like 0, 1, 2. But it says that F only exists between 2 and 4. Like this tells me that F doesn't go outside of 2 and 4. So like whatever my graph of F happens to be from here to here, like it's definitely going to go, like it's going to keep in there. Okay. Like I have not, I have no clue where, but it's definitely going to keep in there. Now the greatest possible value, what would the biggest value be? Well, I guess, especially since it says is less than or equal to, right? And if I have to keep it between two and four, I mean, I guess the biggest it could possibly be would be right along the four, right? So the biggest possible value is base times height. So the greatest it could be is eight. It's an interesting question, but just kind of makes you think about like, what does it mean? So from zero to two, it's between two and four. And so basically it would go like zero to two with a height of two and then zero to two with a height of four. So it would have to fall between four and eight or four and eight. And then the greatest possible value is eight. Okay. Weird. All right. Um, cool, cool. Important word right here. Average value. When I set this up, I'm going to go one over B minus a integral from a to B of my function. Okay. Now this is a U sub question. U is going to be X to the third plus one. DU is going to be three X squared DX. So I have a three and a one third. So I can actually on the outside, I can just go ahead and change that to one sixth, right? Cause I have one third and one half. And then it's square root U and then that, and that make DU. Okay. This is going to be, this is U to the one half. When I integrate it, it's U to the three halves times two thirds. Um, geez, let's see here. Let's go ahead and reduce that. So this is one ninth U to the three halves. And I will go ahead and change my endpoints. If I put two in there, okay. Uh, two to the third is eight plus one is nine. If I put zero in there, Zero to third is zero plus one is one. Okay, little reminder off to the side. What is nine to the three halves? So it's the square root of nine to the third. Well, I'm gonna do the square root first. Square root of nine is three, three to the third is 27. And then what's one to the three halves? Well, it's the square root of one to the third, which is just one. Okay, so then my final answer here is gonna be one ninth nine to the three halves minus one to the three halves. So nine, three halves, so that's 27 minus one, which is 26 over nine, which doesn't reduce. And here we go. All right, just kidding. Cool. It's weird. I'm looking at it. I'm like, hmm, long division? No, because the bigger one's not on the top. Hmm, U sub? Probably. If you have a fraction, that's going to be down here. Uh, where U is going to be the bottom of the fraction. But this is actually cool. DU is 2x plus 2dx. But right here, I don't have 2x plus 2. I have x plus 1. But do you guys see that if I put a 2 and distributed it, it would be 2x plus 2, right? So I can get this all to match up by putting a 2 on the top and a 1 half on the outside. Okay, and then that's u, and then 2, 2x plus 2dx is du. And this just ends up becoming a 1 half ln u. Okay, now I do have endpoints on this one, so I'm going to change them. 
if I plug in two up here, uh, let's see here, u would be two squared plus two times two, four plus four would be eight. If I plug in one up here, u would be one squared plus two times one, which would be three. Okay, so this is one half ln eight minus ln three, which I actually see right here. So I guess it decided not to do the thing on this problem where it's like combining them and makes it eight over three. Like it definitely could. We definitely could do that. Just didn't do that for whatever reason. So we'll just leave it as the minus one. Okay. Oh, my friends, we're getting so close to the end. Whew, if you made it this far in the video, you're freaking awesome. You're the best ever. All right. I mean that. Okay. You sub. Okay, u is 3x squared plus 5, du is 6x dx, 6 1 6 Okay, now when I integrate this with the square root on the bottom, I use u to the negative 1 half. So I get 1 6 if I add 1, that's u to the 1 half over 1 half, which is times 2 over 1. Okay, so that, that reduces to one-third u to the one-half. Oh, I was about to say plug in my endpoints. I don't have endpoints in this one. Okay, so it's one-third u was 3x squared plus 5 to the one-half plus c. So I'm looking for one-third, yeah, that one, okay. 3x squared plus 5 to the 1 half plus c. Cool. Um, here's another k1. Oh my gosh, and we're evaluating it k? For goodness sakes. Okay. The integral of 2kx. Now, 2k is a constant. Okay, think of that as a constant. And the integral of x is x squared over 2. So it's 2kx squared over 2, but do you guys see that that 2 and that 2 can cross out? So I'm going to do that. And then that's x to the third over 3, and I'm evaluating that k to 0, and it equals 18. So that's ugly, but okay. So if I plug in, well, okay, this is weird. I'm going to do top minus bottom. Okay, if I plug in k right here, I get k squared. k squared times k is k to the third. If I plug in k right here, I get k to the third over 3. If I plug in 0 for x, I get 0 minus 0. Okay. So I have k to the third minus k to the third over 3. Um, if I get a common denominator, that would be, no, 3 over 3. Right? 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 2k to the third over 3. Perfect. Now, this tells me that it was supposed to equal 18. All right, so to solve this, I'm going to multiply by 3. So that'll say uh, 2k to the third equals 54. I'm going to divide by 2. So uh, k to the third equals 27. And then I'm going to just go ahead and cube root both sides. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, so for this one, we just end up getting k equals 3. All right, nice. Uh, 38 u sub. u is x squared plus 1, du is 2x dx, 2, 1 half. That becomes 1 over u du. So this is just 1 half ln u. I am going to change endpoints on this one. 
All right, if I plug in a 3 right here, 9 plus 1 is 10. If I plug in a 2 right here, 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay? So I get ln 10 minus ln 5. Now, when you look at the answers right here, none of them have like a minus in it. So it is going to combine these. It is, right? And we talked about how when you're subtracting lns, you divide that. So what's the ln of 10 divided by 5 is the ln of 2. So that's 1 half ln of 2. Oh, hallelujah, which is there. So they're not trying to mess with me on that one. And there we go. All right. Cool. This is another second fundamental theorem of calculus is a review question. Okay. Um, okay. Cause it's basically saying find the derivative of F. Well, the derivative of that would be the derivative of this. And you guys remember when we do derivative of an integral, we just plug that in. So it's X squared to the third. But the thing is, if the thing that we are plugging in is anything different than a regular X, for chain rule, I have to multiply by 2x. So it's actually the square root of 1 plus x to the 6th times 2x. Okay, so it's definitely not, like, it's definitely not e, because, like, what the heck? <laughs> it didn't really change anything. Um, it's definitely not that, because it didn't, you know, put the times 2x, and it's not that, because it didn't square it. Uh, it's definitely going to be this one. Okay, now all the different types that we've talked about, all right, going through, let's say you're like, okay, is this, obviously it's not long division, it's not absolute value, is it U sub? It's actually not U sub, and I'll show you why. If I tried to do this with U sub, okay, U would be X squared plus one, DU would be two X DX, like there's no X in here, so I can't do that, okay? So it's actually not U sub. This is the one, and I told you you're going to have one of these on your test. Multiply out. Basically, just if it's like squared or something, it's usually the easiest way to do it is just multiply it out. So if I multiply this out, well, I'm going to do my little multiply out box method. X squared plus 1 times X squared plus 1. Okay, so that's X to the 4th plus 1X squared plus 1X squared plus 1. So all together, that is x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. Now I can integrate each part of this separately. Okay, let me put it down here. x to the fourth becomes x to the fifth over 5. 2x squared becomes x to the third over 3. 1 becomes 1x plus c. Okay, so that is precisely that one. All right, so if you can't do u sub, or especially if you see something that's just like squared and nothing else, multiply it out and it'll be an easy one to do. Okay. Oh, cool. I feel like we did that question on something. Anyway, okay, if the second derivative of f is given by that, which of the following could be f of x? Why is it saying could? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, if I integrate this. That brings me to the first derivative, which would be x squared. Okay, the integral of cosine is positive sine plus a constant. Okay, now if I go one more step to f of x, I get x to the third over 3. Okay, so so far I'm like narrowing it down between those two. The integral of sine is negative cosine. So minus a negative becomes plus cosine. Like already, I can tell it's going to be this one. But let me tell you how we get to the other part, the rest of it. Okay, it's like the integral of a constant is a constant times x. And then another constant. I'll just put like d. So it's basically anything in the form x to the third over 3 plus cosine of x. Something constant with x and a number. So the fact that, oops, the fact that this is like a minus is just because that's what it chose the constant to be. That's why it says could. And then a constant at the end, they just picked like one. 
All right, but the key is it had to turn to positive cosine x. Um, ooh, almost done. If the integral of a to b of f of x is 5, let's say this is like f of x, if that integral is 5, and then the integral of g of x is negative 1, so it's like down here somewhere, does f have to be greater than g the entire time? You know, I don't think so, because look, what if f was like, what if f was that? Let's say that was f of x. Okay, let's say that this part was 6 and that part was negative 1. Then uh, f of x would be 5, right? Let's say g of x went like that or something. And let's say that this was negative 4 and positive 3 or whatever because that would equal out to negative 1. Did f, the function f, have to be bigger than the function of g for every point within there? No, because, like, I don't know. I, I mean, I just made it, but, like, right over there it didn't, you know? So it doesn't necessarily have to be true. That's weird. Now, is this a property? Yeah, that's absolutely a property. You can separate out if you're adding integrals. It's the integral of f plus the integral of g. That's definitely a property, so that's true. That definitely not a property. If I have f of x times g of x, I am definitely not allowed to just integrate both, right? That is bad, bad. Okay, so only two only, that's the only um, Yeah, that's the only uh, one of those that must be true. And then, okay, last one. A1 and A2 are positive numbers. Great. Represents the area of the shaded region. In terms of A1 and A2, what is this? Okay, so this is f of x. All right, let me start with this part. Okay, the integral from negative 4 to 4 is going to be a1 minus a2 because that's on the bottom of the fraction right and it said those were positive numbers so it's like or it's on the bottom of the uh, graph so that's a1 minus a2 okay now let's see this one minus 2 oops that was weird minus 2, and then the integral from negative 1 to 4. And the integral from negative 1 to 4 is negative a2. And so what I'm getting here, I'm getting a1 minus a2, and a negative times a negative is a positive, plus 2a2. So I'm getting a1, and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1a2. So it's just a1 plus a2. Weird. There we go. Oh my goodness, we're done. Hooray, hooray. If you guys understood all the questions on here, like you're so chilling, right? We talked about how we have new sub on this test. We talked about how we have split up the fraction. We have a long division. We have an absolute value. Um, we have where you like manipulate those endpoints and stuff. Um, Is there anything else for you? Uh, no, that's it. Like, you guys, if you feel uncomfortable about that, you got that. All right? Now, don't forget, if you haven't turned in 7.3 homework yet, because we didn't have time to go over it in class, I posted it up there. Um, I went through, I didn't have time to, like, make a video, right? But I definitely went through and gave you all the answers and even, like, wrote my work. Look how pretty that looks. I'll scroll through here real quick in case you guys want to take screenshots or anything. So there's like the first four questions. And then there's the next four questions. And then there's the ones on the 
back, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 and 13. Okay, so that's posted though on Canvas. So just make sure that you guys have found, um, yeah, make sure that you're chilling with your review and any other homeworks, you can bring it to me. And you guys are good. I think you do really well on this test, all right? Have a great day, my friends.